Hello, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you're doing well. Let's talk about one of the biggest and strangest come-ups in rap music as of late. That would be New York hip-hop artist Lil Mabu. Have you seen this kid? I don't ask that because he looks like the kind of bright-eyed white child you would see with missing over his head on a milk carton. I ask because you may have seen him. You may not because he inhabits a very specific lane in rap music at the moment uh, where he's not quite mainstream yet, and yet he is netting tens of millions of views and streams. It is pretty clear, though, this dude had intentions for commercial success early on. One of the earliest singles he put out about when he was 15 is the song Miss Me, which is a, a very sweet and pillowy bubblegum little rap track that feels maybe just a few rungs below uh, what you might have heard back in the day from a kid like Matty B. Don't ever put dirt on my dude Matty's name. He paved the way for these white children. So yeah, just a few years ago, Lil Mabu was dropping these sweet, cute, I'm just a little guy raps. But this isn't actually what brought him to the level of fame that he is currently at today. It wouldn't be until he dropped tracks in more of a New York drill style that he uh, really started to turn heads. Sounding like a suburban pop smoke in one of the first tracks to embrace this direction, Demon Time. Now, instrumentally and flow wise, I would say this track is not too bad. Lyrically, it's far from being one of the most controversial you'll hear in this genre. It's not like Mabu is hopping on the mic and uh, listing off the names of his dead rivals or anything like that. He just kind of made a passable drill track on this song. However, uh, that was not enough for the kid because from here, he really started to reinvent his public image and begin to build this little drill empire for himself, which means actually building up a facade of street cred, collaborating with other drill rappers like Didi Osama, as well as a, a Dusty Locane, who he made the anti-snitching anthem with no snitching. Plus, Mabu has put out a host of different little TikToks and YouTube short type content where he's pretending to be caught on camera like lacking or uh, like carrying a weapon with him that he's not supposed to have, obviously reinforcing the idea that he's at least tacitly about the life that is usually associated with New York drill music. Why are you lacking? Lacking? What you mean, bro? I'm outside Dolly, you know, Mabu's body, bro. What you got on you like? Sure. Oh, he got the now! Now, as much as Mabu wants to align himself with this world, at a certain point, he does begin to realize that there is value in him looking like an anomaly in drill, looking like an outsider to some extent. It's after this he decides to drop the kind of tongue-in-cheek single, Trip to the Hood. One of his biggest singles so far, where he decides to switch up his delivery a little bit, get kind of screamy, raspy, sounding like a 6ix9ine on one of his earlier bangers. In fact, I would say it's kind of a blatant ripoff. While I get that Mabu's behavior in the track is very intentionally silly, it's still a parasitic attempt to leech some sort of notoriety out of some murder music, while also reinforcing stereotypes about the kind of neighborhoods that a black people People live in in the hood generally. There's literally a fucking crosshairs on one of the O's in the word hood. Now, look, this is not necessarily a commentary on uh, the quality of Mabu's music itself or his lyrical ability. I do think a lot of his singles go just as hard as anything else happening in drill music at the moment, but that's not really the point. As most of his songs and YouTube shorts and music videos are kind of dripping with irreverence and mockery, intentional or not, it's clear he doesn't take the music that he's standing on all that seriously in terms of the content it's delivering and is mostly just using it as a platform to act like a clown and gain clout. Seeing Mabu build a name for himself doing all of this leaves me impressed in one breath, but also kind of grossed out in another because unless he has a huge team of people behind him, he is single-handedly responsible for some of the smartest, but also some of the most cynical and opportunistic music marketing I've seen from an independent artist ever. Now, at the end of the day, Mabu, of course, is far from the first person to exploit rap music for personal gain. Uh, there are countless rap artists, commentators, and label executives who are guilty of that. But I guess what's rubbing me the wrong way currently is uh, this most recent turn that Mabu has been trying to pull off with his brand and his music. I feel like it's one thing to come into hip hop or music in general purely with the intention to entertain, even if that entertainment is kind of cheap. But now, after all of this, Mabu is currently trying to sell his audience on this narrative arc where 
he has graduated school and he's going to show the world he can do it all as a rapper, as a student, as a whatever he wants to be. The vlog where he stated all of this was eventually followed up with a new song and music video titled At What Cost, which is a piano backed Macklemore ass track where Mabu is trying to paint himself as like an inspirational figure of sorts, which to me is actually more concerning than any drill track he's dropped up until this point. Because sure, I could personally personally see the magnetic draw that a sheltered white kid from the suburbs would have toward violent rap music. That has been a phenomenon for decades now. But Mabu pushes it further on this track with an almost cult of personality type energy, where the self-aggrandizement Mabu is doing on this track feels totally disconnected from what he's actually celebrating. Look guys, I did it. I really did it. I gamed the system and made a name for myself with a parody white boy gangster image, and now you should see me as a rap icon, as a move maker, and maybe even a little bit a guy who's a victim of his own success. Which to me is like making a vlog bragging about being the best loan shark or the greatest used car salesman because you developed a secret trick uh, for odometer fraud. The way Mabu portrays himself in this song and music video is completely and utterly warped, which I can only get upset over because what 18 year old doesn't have a slightly warped perception of self especially when they have millions of people watching them be inauthentic on a regular basis. I don't really have a solution or an ultimate conclusion for all of this, in part because I don't find these developments super surprising, and uh, also Mabu's story is still ongoing. While his music and his brand may be nothing but a complete joke to me, in this weird world of clout and short attention spans, he could very much be able to uh, swing his current rap career into something maybe more serious. I guess we'll see if he can pull that off or if he will completely go up in smoke, distancing himself from the violent and braggadocious drill aesthetics that he wrote in here on. Those are my thoughts on all of that. Let me know yours in the comments and wherever else you want to throw them at me. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Lil Mabu, forever.